In this smartphone show, a news section featuring video footage of the Sony Ericsson P1i, a hands-on review of the Nokia 6290, a wolf in sheep's clothing, and another rant, this time on the subject of buying unlocked smartphones and getting a bargain. Sony Ericsson has launched the P1i, a cross between its older P990 and M600 models, combining the best of both and adding four times the free RAM. An interesting form factor with UIQ3 as its interface, watch the show for a review in half a dozen shows time. HTC just bought out one of their own resellers, Dopod, for $15 million, meaning that you'll be seeing the HTC name even more as part of their, quote, gradual integration process. Orange, Vodafone, among others, have announced new data tariffs in the UK at least, e.g. £8 a month unlimited on an Orange contract or £2 a megabyte on Vodafone pay-as-you-go. All changes begin in June, so I'm guessing some Ofcom recommendation finally hit home, and about time too. If you are taken by my E90 communicator coverage in the last show, note that I've been doing a review series on it over on All About Symbian in extreme detail. This device is going to be popular, mark my words. Finally, Google Maps for Mobile just got better, with proper routing, business directions, etc. for most European countries, and Australia, bizarrely, plus the usual jaw-dropping satellite imagery, of course. Perhaps the original wolf in sheep's clothing, the Nokia 6290, through the power of using the S60 3rd edition Feature Pack 1 platform, manages to pack in a significant amount of the functionality of this, the Nokia N95, into a package being offered for only £200 SIM free, roughly a third the cost of its famous stablemate. Now obviously something has to go in order to build a smartphone down to this price. So the camera is a humble point and shoot 2 megapixel affair, but still up to Nokia's usual good quality in this department, providing the light's good enough. There's flash too, and video recording at 320 by 240 pixels, perfect for uploading to a YouTube video blog, for example. There's no Wi-Fi, or GPS, or TV out, but otherwise, amazingly, it's all here. From loud stereo speakers on either side, to dedicated music controls here on the clamshell cover, from mini USB connectivity, to 3G, Bluetooth, and infrared ports, to beautifully tucked away ports and slots on the left, top, and right sides, the 6290's every inch an S60 smartphone, even if it doesn't carry the prestigious N-series moniker. The 6290's nicely rounded and looks and feels exactly as a clamshell should in the hand, although it might seem a bit chunky to the razor-loving brigade. Opening the clamshell answers a call and closing it hangs up. The three buttons beneath the cover display are mapped to functions in a mini music player and FM radio interface, with the volume up-down controls on the right-hand side used to navigate the small menus where necessary. While the music's playing, there's also a rather neat frequency animation on this display, just as on the flagship N93 clamshell. Capacity is via micro SD expansion, as usual, up to 2 gigabytes, enough for dozens of albums in MP3, AAC or WMA format, while you can listen using Bluetooth stereo, A2DP, or any standard 2.5mm wired headset. The usual S60 PIM apps and quick office viewers are all present and correct, plus an extra bonus game, Marble Cannon, a cross between Space Invaders and Bubble Pop. The 6290's screens are each clear, well-mounted and protected from knocks, and the keypad is thankfully made up from discrete keys which are an absolute pleasure to enter text on. The navigator key is large and also works well. My only complaint would be that there's a plasticky sound when some of the top keys are pressed. Though in fairness, this device was very new and the key membrane underneath might just be wearing in. OK, so the 6290 is quite obviously 100% plastic. But it looks the part, in blue, I guess other colours will be announced shortly, seems sturdy enough for day-to-day -day life, and the functionality wouldn't be out of place on something costing a lot more. Whether it's Nokia cracking the mainstream with S60, or a clued-up smartphone fan wanting an absolute bargain, the 6290 deserves to do extremely well. Yes, it's another Steve rant. The one against touchscreens was so well received I thought I'd chance my arm one more time. 
This time the subjects locked smartphones and there's also a few thoughts on a real bargain. How to get a top S60 3rd edition communicator, brand new, SIM free, for £90. The concept of locked versus unlocked phones and smartphones isn't that technical. I'm hoping you already know the difference. Locked devices are usually sold through high street shops and through network operator websites. They're branded and locked to a specific network, e.g. Vodafone. And the main benefit is that they're heavily subsidised. Because you commit to a 12-month or 18-month contract, spending 20 to £40 pound or so a month, you get the smartphone itself very cheap or even free. If you've got a contract that's about to expire and you make a lot of calls, this can be a very good deal. But for the rest of us, there are a few things you should know about buying SIM lock smartphones this way. One, obviously, if you've bought a subsidised phone, then you're committed to paying the monthly fee, even if you don't end up using it much for calls or you want to sell it in six months' time. And you can't switch to another phone network without paying a penalty. Two, less obviously, SIM lock phones tend to be branded with logos and startup screens, annoying, and often crippled too with alterations to the main standby screen, e.g. Orange, or removal of manufacturer standard functionality, e.g. Vodafone. What a voice over IP fiasco that was with the N95. Number three, important but not often realised, is that SIM lock phones are harder to update to newer firmware versions. Unlocked devices can apply manufacturer firmware updates straight away, whilst locked devices are at the mercy of the support teams of the network operator, whose version of each update is likely to be delayed several months, and sometimes indefinitely. With all this in mind, I have to recommend that unless there's a really pressing financial reason to stick to locked contract smartphones, it's usually better in the long run to buy your devices unlocked, from internet shops such as Clove Expanses in the UK, for example, and because they're unlocked, they'll fetch a much higher second-hand price when you decide to sell them later. But, and I'll grant you, buying a smartphone unlocked can be initially expensive. Even though they're a good investment, it can be hard to find a spare £300 plus lying around in your pocket. So, for all the cash-strapped viewers watching, here's a great current example of one avenue to try. Following on from my recent review of the new Nokia E61i communicator, I've been wondering what's happening to the older E61 model. And the answer is that it's available, unlocked to any network, often brand new, from sellers on eBay for as little as £90 in the UK. That's how much this one cost me yesterday. To put it into perspective, I've been reviewing quite a few S60 3rd edition smartphones, uh, and this is one of the best, with large and bright landscape screen and a very usable QWERTY thumb keyboard. The main downside is that there's, there's no camera, this being conceived as a purely business device. But I know that for some people, a camera in their handheld or smartphone isn't that important. So if this is you then, to get a keyboarded, fairly cutting edge communicator for £90, about $170 US dollars, with no network lock or commitments, is astounding value. By the way, if you do go and get yourself an E61 over the coming two or three months, uh, E61 prices will tumble further, by the way, as the E61i becomes available in large numbers. One tip is to make sure you go on Nokia software update as soon as you get the device and check you've got the latest firmware update before you start loading up with software and data. Of course, other unlocked smartphones, including those running Windows Mobile 5 and Palm OS, are up on eBay all the time. Here are a few examples that caught my eye. An iMate SP5 Wi-Fi enabled smartphone boxed as new Unlocked, it went for £52. A Palm Trio 650, boxed and unlocked, quoted as excellent condition, it went for £100 on the nail. The usual eBay cautions apply, of course. Check the seller's feedback, comments and rating. Double check the device is unlocked, or at least locked to your existing SIM and network. And double check the condition of the device. Happy bidding. And do email me with any particular smartphone bargains you happen to spot this summer.